Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 and FY23 earnings conference call of Eris Life Sciences Limited. We have with us on the call today Mr. Amit Bakshi, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. V. Krishna Kumar, Chief Operating Officer and Executive Director. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now want the conference over to Mr. V. Krishna Kumar, Chief Operating Officer and Executive Director of the company. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, and welcome to our fourth quarter conference call. I'm Krishna Kumar, and I'll be sharing the highlights of the quarter and full year with you. We have reported standalone revenues of rupees 315 crores in quarter four, which represents a growth of 11 and a half percent. Our standalone revenues for FY23 stand at rupees 1,331 crores which represents a growth of 9.5%. This has been lower than our guidance due to a couple of factors. First, we had launched an immunity-boosting supplement called ZAG-D during the wave 2 of COVID, which did exceedingly well during the pandemic. However, given a strong association with COVID, the sales fell off a cliff post the pandemic, wherein we discontinued the product. In addition, we had to take returns and write-offs in FY23. While we did not discuss this as a major point in our commentary during the year, the fact remains that this has impacted some part of our standalone growth for the year. Secondly, there were a couple of significant brands in FY23, Zio being one of them. We cannot talk much about them since the matter is still sub -judice. But where we took extended periods of primary sales disruption, that were unforeseen. Adjusted for these two one-time factors, our standalone revenue growth for the year from our continuing business stood at 15.6%. In fact, our base business continues to perform stronger than ever. Our diabetes franchise has grown by 25%, and we have gained a rank in the therapy, with Limitave having become a 300-plus crore revenue mother brand. Our cardiac franchise has grown by 16%, excluding the impact of Zio, and our VMN franchise has grown by 16%, excluding the impact of Zaxi. We invested Rs. 1,265 crores in consummating three dermatology acquisitions in FY23. This has been our largest single-year investment, and that too in a single therapy. Notwithstanding that dermatology is a large and attractive therapy, we need to acknowledge that this investment was not an easy decision and it took a lot of heart and conviction on our part. This conviction came from three aspects of our business understanding. Number one, our long-standing experience in chronic therapy. Number two, our ability to build, forge lasting relationships with super specialists. And number three, the stickiness of old gold brands and our ability to build them further. Post the acquisition of Oaknet, we approached the business with an owner-manager mindset and with a complete willingness to roll up our sleeves and do the hard work to create value. We took a slew of value creation initiatives focused on product range expansion, driving sales and marketing excellence, and expansion of specialist coverage. Within six months of the acquisition, we could start seeing early impact in terms of an acceleration in organic growth and margin expansion. And we started getting the conviction that we have a strong base there which we can build on. Hence, when we got the opportunity to bring in complementary products through the Glenmark and the Reddy's Bolton deal in quarter four, we had the confidence to go ahead. I'm happy to note that our thesis has delivered tangible results in OpenX very first year with us, with the business clocking a 22% organic growth in FY23 after a spell of three flat years during FY20 to FY22. 
the EBITDA margin has expanded from 10% in FY22 to 24% in FY23, and we are confident of a further expansion in FY24. On a standalone basis, our EBITDA margin for FY23 was 38%, down by 185 bits from FY22, largely driven by a 134 bits increase in standalone COGS. The lost sales on account of COVID products and at-risk launches that I just spoke about have also played their part. However, we continue to maintain a consolidated gross margin of close to 80%, despite the dilution in margins caused by the amalgamation of the new businesses, specifically Oaknet and our Greenfield insulin fees. With Oaknet performance becoming stronger and our insulin volume scaling up, we expect a significant uptick in consolidated gross margin as well as EBITDA margin in FY24. Preservation of a consolidated gross margin of 80% has been an integral component of our growth strategy all these years and will continue to remain so in future as well. Eris MJ, which houses our greenfield insulin business, has organically clocked a revenue of Rs. 17 crores in its first full year of commercial operations. We have two commercial products at present, human insulin and glargine. We are expecting this business to scale up significantly in the coming year with a narrowing of operating losses. In order to simplify our corporate structure and unlock synergies among our business units, effective 1st April 2024, we propose to demerge the domestic formulation business of Oaknet and amalgamate it with the parent company, Eris Life Sciences. Through this merger, we will strengthen our overall go-to market alongside realizing better operating efficiency, scale benefits, and business synergy. We have already commenced the operational integration of the businesses from 1st of April, and this is expected to be completed by the end of June 2023. Our detailed standalone and consolidated financial information is available in our investor presentation uploaded earlier today. These were the highlights for the quarter and the year. We are now happy to open up for questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin for the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to do me yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is on the line of Kunal Damesha from Inquiry. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my question. So the first one on the uh, this amalgamation of Oaknet domestic business, uh, what kind of synergies are we uh, looking at on that front? Um, you know, uh, would we be able to generate some cost savings from there, or what's the thought process there? And uh, second, on the insulin side, I think uh, last quarter we said this quarter uh, we were expected to do around seven to eight crore revenue, but again we are coming at around six crore. And that's been flat for two quarters. Uh, you know, the burn has also increased a little bit. So, what are our expectations? And uh, probably, you know, uh, what different uh, things we are trying to kind of see the uptick there? Yeah. So, uh, insulin first. We had some supply issues in the month of uh, in the last quarter. Uh, therefore, the sales was uh, you know little slow. Uh, Otherwise, Glargin has uh, you know, uh, done well when we look at April. So our plan for the next year remain intact. I, we don't feel you know, any significant movement from what we have spoken. And we are aiming for uh, you know, uh, no loss in this year from uh, MJ. So we maintain that uh, number uh, both on the top line and bottom line. And uh, synergies uh, from the two things, look, uh, we are looking to top sell between uh, uh, women health, uh, dermatology, and some endocrinology. 
we know we have been strong player in endocrinology and there are two indications which are you know which are very good when it comes to dermatology also one is the PCOS, PCOS in girls which is our mainstay uh, you know narrative in the women's cell business within Eris and PCOS you know it has a manifestation of skin uh, you know skin problems so we need we see that you know we can cross cell at that uh, you know in uh, at that level and we are also looking at a postmenopausal kind of a scenario, which basically again is an interface between hormone and dermatology. So, women, endocrinology and dermatology, we are trying to put this together and cross them. Uh, so, will it, what, what will it do? Will it increase our doctor coverage or uh, the product that we take to, like in terms of? Uh, you know, the, the benefit, how should we think about the benefit going through for us? Yeah, so higher penetration. We have been, uh, Octet has just been, uh, has been selling dermatology only to dermatologists at this point of time. We will extend that dermatology uh, bouquet to endocrinologists and uh, uh, gynecologists. So that's the, you'll see a greater reach uh, in the coming time. Okay, and and second one on the Oaknet, uh, you know, I think we have seen a very good growth. Uh, so that's great for this year, and we kind of remain confident. Uh, but I think uh, you know we have operated multiple levers, uh, like increasing the uh, penetration to around ninety percent of dermatologists, and then also launching new products. But do you see enough runway, uh, you know, going into FY 24, 25, where we can continue to see similar growth that we have seen? in FY23 for Oaknet or uh, would you say the low hanging fruits are already there and then now it's more about uh, you know uh, building the existing brands? Uh... Well, there is you know, there's too much in hand as of now. I mean, uh, I don't know how far it goes, but we have a 24 products lined up for new launches which we have been, which we are holding up at least for the first two quarters. We have been working on some formulation development uh, throughout the last year. Some of them are now coming through. There is one or two things which we are talking to an uh, international li uh, licensing, which is also in progress. Uh, the new brands which we have uh, taken from Denmark and Dr. Reddy are showing us a complete new phase of growth. So the opportunities are uh, quite high. But we are not taking everything together. We are just walking one step by the other. So first six months would be consolidation uh, uh, of, and getting the sales together with in increasing the reach in this specialty which I was talking about. And in the second half, we will look at expansion. We have got three divisions. I am very con I can comfortably tell, tell you that post the second half, we will be having a fourth division also. And uh, I've been talking to you about this, that you, you, the sales look good. If you look at the presentation, it says we are number three in our covered market. But there's a large market which we are not presenting. And that is typically the acne market, which is very large, and the hair care market. And we have got everything aligned there from a product to a narrative. So there's too much in hand, but we'll take it you know, one by one. So that's how the plan is. The OpenNet and the methodology is going to keep us very busy for the next two years. Sure. Thank you. I have more questions. I'll get, I'll get them in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Puneet Pajara from Helios Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my question. So I had a question on incident clarging. Uh, you referred to the supply issue. So was that from Biocon? No, no clarging issue. It was human incident issue, the NJPs. I uh, understood. And, and so could you just give us a bit about how the clinical trials are in that is most within this calendar? Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. Your voice is breaking up, Mr. Pajara. Yeah, is this is that uh, so it's still breaking up. Hello. 
Yes, sir. This is slightly better. Please proceed. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so can you give us an update uh, about the insulin glargin product that was in clinical trials, which is targeted to be launched in the current calendar year? Yes, yeah, so it's going online, uh, Mr. Pujara. We see uh, the uh, the studies are closed. We have to get them to the DCGI. So we are running, uh, you know, on time as far as glargin and also the GLP is concerned. Uh, we are uh, we are very hopeful that we'll see the launch in this year. So nothing changes on that stand. It is going as per the plan. And once we submit the randomization, uh, so my bad. Once we submit the uh, clinical trial data, it will take around six months of time. Is that understanding right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Generally, it is. Uh, but you know, in the last couple of months, there's a little bit of slowness in the movement in the department. So. We expect that to get all right. We are expecting a June or a July hearing. Let's see how it pans out. But the study has been completed. Sure, sir. That, uh, that answers my question. Thanks, I'll join the question. Sure. Thank you. The next question is on the line of the chair, Manudani from Mutila Lothwal Financial Services. Please go ahead. So, just a clarity first. Uh, Existing for dry and black D for 4Q FY23, what would be the uh, standalone year on year growth? Not done that math. No? I mean, we have not done that math, but most of the, you know, ZAG D, there was some. So there will be no ZAG D effect okay, in the fourth quarter. But, uh, it will be at risk for that. Yeah, basically. But we so can, we can yeah. start and get back. Yeah. So look, it should be in the range between, it, it should be around 300 basis points, largely saying I've not done the math, but you know, uh, from the gut. So ZAGD doesn't have an effect because we finished by that time, uh, ZAGD was almost out. So it's only about the at risk, which would be, uh, you know, in the question. So it's actually 4Q effect 22 had chains of ZAGD and ZAGD, or it didn't, you know, that would clear on this. Say that again, I'm sorry. Same quarter last year, did we have ZagD and Zio same? No, ZagD, Zio, yes, but not ZagD. I mean, I have to check, uh, Tushar, but ZagD would be very minimal. But let me, let me check, but anecdotally, I can tell you, we are talking about around 300 basis, and we are talking 11.3, no? 11 and a half. 11 and a half. So take it 14 and a half, 15. That's what it looks like. Fine, Mr. And the secondly, just to understand how much would be the operation cost related to this Gujarat facility, which would come up in FY24? Yeah, so that will come in the books in financial year 24 from a full year standpoint. And it should be, you know, similar to the Gohati plant level. Understood. And considering the significant launches, considering the operational cost for this facility, still, uh, still the profitability of the margin can look uh, not for required industry. Is that understanding right? Yes, Tushar. Uh, so factoring in everything, we are still expecting a meaningful uh, jump in a margin uh, in this financial year. All right, that helps. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Ang Prakash Agrawal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Um, thanks for the opportunity. Just trying to understand, uh, you know, the slide pool better. So, you know, Africa and uh, this uh, trade journey, EHPL, both have made some losses. Uh, and uh, what are we thinking about these two small ones? Uh, uh, your, your, your statement on organic standalone growth is taken well. But I'm trying to understand how should we see the margins going? Because I understand insulin business can turn if it are neutral. And uh, Eris Therapeutics also. So, if you could give some color on these segments that you have described, how does that look mm. for 26 and 25? So, Raj, uh, so hi, Prakash. Prakash, with EHPL uh, was always a drag on the EBITDA, right? 
and I, I remember telling in one of the calls that you we are not very dumbo about the uh, the train generally, so the sentiment continues. Uh, we will try and not lose this four crore rupees in in this year, which we lost in the last year. We lost four four crores. Yeah. So the plan is, uh, I have no uh, upside on the uh, on the top line. The plan is simply no loss at a EBITDA level. Regarding Africa, it was a bad year for Africa. It is not a bad year. We've been doing well over a period of time, but we had some, even some one, one of its kind situation in Africa. So Africa, I remain positive. I, I see Africa, you know, doing well in this year and getting back uh, in both into the profit EBITDA as well as the top line growth. Okay, and sir, some some color on the Eris MJ and derivatives. Eris MJ, you know, Eris MJ. I mean, we expected 20 crores down by the end of the year when we started, and we are almost there. We want we wanted it to do 2021 crores, but we ended up 17 crores. Some plans didn't work out, and some there were some uh, deficiencies in supplies uh, from uh, NJ, especially in the last quarter. So we are aiming for a zero EBITDA there, which you which you said. And uh, there is therapeutics is basically where the the Vijay facility is. Yeah. So the expense so, which you see is on the facility piece. Yeah, okay. So the plant has uh, commercialized in March, Prakash. So this will be the first full year where Eris Therapeutics will start booking revenue. So once that starts happening, which has already started happening from April, then you will see the you know numbers falling in place. Okay, and uh, uh, some color on how to... Uh, sorry for the interruption. For all practical purposes, you should see Eris Therapeutics as part of standalone. Correct. It's just a different operating plant uh, because of which it is in a separate company, but it is part of standalone. Okay, understood. So, moving forward, the 2C drag that we had of uh, these one-off products you mentioned and the new initiatives, uh, how do you see, uh, you know, the base business growth and margins uh, for you? Just a little very broad color uh, guidance. I'm, I'm not sure if you have already said I joined a little late. Yeah, Prakash, Prakash, we thought that we'll give you guidance after the end of the first quarter because, you know, uh, Oakland has now become a prominent part of the entire piece, both from the top line and also expected at the bottom line. And this was the first month when you know everything was getting together. Not the first month technically, but you know we could we booked only 12 crore rupee sales of the Myanmar and Red in the first quarter, uh, and that was expected because of the pipeline filling and all those things. But uh, uh, I mean, April has come out well. So because Oakland was a considerable and significant piece, we would wait for a quarter to give you uh, you know the guidance for the next year. So that's our bad. It, 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 it takes a little more time than that. And uh, uh, regarding the standalone, we just told you we, we grew 9.5% on the books. And we, we wanted to grow 15% at the start of the year. And you know, we, we told you why it got uh, you know, a little jarred. Okay. We expect, we expect the look, margins have never troubled us in the standalone. We continue to be at 38-40% uh, margin. So the growth uh, in our terms internally has been quite good. Last year has been one of the best years for us internally. But because of all these issues on the financial, you have a stress. So we believe that we can continue this kind of trajectory, especially because of the new launches, which are shaping up well. If you look at our new diabetes launches, they have shaped well. Dreamy Stay, which has been a concern uh, you know, about the growth, and we've been telling that you know, it's a product, it's a big product has now hit more than 300 crores at the, uh, at the reflection, uh, reflection level. So I have no problems in the standalone business other than these moving parts. And I believe the journey would be like that. Okay, fair enough. And lastly, on the strategy, so fiscal 24, you have to the assets to turn around and you have some debt. So is, uh, is it fair to assume that the focus will be largely this and to pay the debt uh, versus, or you would be open to any opportunistic asset as well? First two quarters, we want to pay it back. That's, uh, that's the idea which we are working. First two quarters, that's right. So nothing uh, in six months' time, hopefully. That is how we are, uh, you know, we are preparing ourselves. 
So six months is consolidation and putting everything together. Post six months is the time when we will look when we will look at it. Having said that, if there is something which is very you know mouth watering and one of a kind kind of a thing, then we might change the view. Okay, fair enough. I have one more if you allow me on the you know the working capital side. So it is largely due to the acquisition last month and having full balance sheet impact, or is it a uh, you know, uh, going forward also we see this or it will come down? It will come down, Prakash. By the end of the financial year, you will see that a lot of it will get normalized. Uh, so I think standalone data days of, you know, 35 to 40 or around 35, I think that is still something that is the normal for the business. There have been too many, too many one-time events that have happened in the financial year because of which you see this number being slightly different, but it will fall in line. Okay, thank you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bino from Milara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, um, good afternoon. Uh, most of my questions are answered. Just one clarification. If I remember correctly earlier, you had uh, given a guidance of your tax rate uh, being about 25% in FY25. Um, now with substantial acquisitions, uh, would there be any change in that uh, at a blended level, overall level? No, there is no significant change because of the acquisitions. Uh, the trigger for the tax rate was related to a Guwahati facility, so that still remains to be the case. Oh, I think that we are able to get a lot of, uh, you know, some of or lot of the dermatology product in our own plan, which is a little ambitious for this year, but if we are able to get it, then we will see some benefits come rolling out from there. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, how would that be? Because if the plant is coming out of the tax holiday, then uh, how would that benefit? So the, currently, the dermatology formulations are all manufactured by third parties. So when we get it in, then we are working on getting it into our Gujarat facility, which is at a 15% tax rate. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Prashant Nair from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, can you share uh, the? Uh, oh, can you can you share the uh, share of uh, sulfonyl urea products in the diabetes portfolio for this fiscal? Uh, that's number one. And secondly, uh, you know, how have you seen the diabetes market uh, overall evolve after the CETA lifted launch? Has there been any uh, acceleration shift of the market? to CETA Lipton away from either sulfonyl ureas or also uh, you have uh, Vilda Lipton as well. So how kind of uh, played out with, with the end of CETA Lipton coming? Yeah, Prashant. So uh, we'll get, we'll, uh, Kriti will just uh, fetch out the data for sulfonyl ureas. 60% uh, is what KK tells me. Uh, there have been a lot of changes. I, I mean, I, I, let me tell you, we have grown by 25% in the diabetes therapy in this, uh, in this fiscal year. A lot of that growth has been driven by the new products. We already articulated that from a SGLT and DPP port point of view, the contribution has gone up to 41%. This was the last time it, uh, what we discussed. The changes are happening quite rapidly, actually. We see that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Tenaric Lipton, which became very big in the first four years, then got shifted to Wildad Lipton and slowed down. We are seeing a similar trend in plain Wildad Lipton. But Wildad Lipton is now driven by the combination of Wildad Lipton with Java Glyphosin. So the change is actually swift because we haven't had a time when, in four years' time, so many products had come out of the cliff, out of the patent. Uh, as far as uh, our con our position, you know our position. Uh, the, we still feel that you know the market is still shaping up when it comes to Sita Glyptin and combinations. Right? Uh, we hold a number three or number four rank when we put the, both the, uh, the products together. But we still we still feel that you know uh, the you know the report is not out yet. The market is still evolving. Uh, so that's how. This, that's the overview of you know how the new markets are behaving. 
Yeah, thanks. And uh, again, on an overall basis, putting all these things together, how do you see this therapy uh, going for you uh, in the next, uh, say, over the next year or couple of years? So, in fact, we did an internal analysis which we do for our uh, you know, reviews, and uh, we can uh, we are happy to share it with you at some point of time. That last year in Lipton's, we were number one company in terms of games, in uh, Lipton's and combination. So, we continue to have a good share between the new therapies. If you look at diabetes, though, diabetes has been our strength. At no point of time, I remember diabetes not growing far, far ahead of the market. And because this tonic it is sticky, we believe that we have some kind of a grip in that market. So the growth rates will continue in the same uh, trajectory. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. That's it, sir. Thanks, Thanks sir. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tarang from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, KK just wanted to double check. In FI23, there are no revenues flowing from ZACD or ZIO. Would that be a right assertion? Yes, and okay. there were returns that we took, as I mentioned. Okay, and the the growth numbers that you enumerated in your opening address, these are all on on the business, right? These are not uh, uh, AIOCD numbers. These are on on your PNL, correct? All these are from our PNL. No, no, but AIOCD also reports the 15 percent growth for us, 15 and a half percent growth. It does, but. In the first para that we spoke about, yeah. we only spoke about primary numbers. Okay. okay. We yeah. did not refer to AIOCD. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Shah from Kosar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. I was referring to slide number 15. So, uh, Considering that you know top 20 brands now account for almost 70% of the revenues, and uh, you know considering the uh, acquisitions which we have done in the last one one and a half year, uh, sir, can you provide us a sort of a consolidated view on how the company will look six months down the line, uh, with what kind of revenues? And once we have set that base, how do we plan to you know grow this organically? Uh, what will be a sustainable growth rate? Can you throw some light on that? One of the most frequented words in the entire presentation is organic. So, you know, it's all over the place. And uh, I, we will take one more quarter to, you know, uh, we understand where you are coming from. Just give us one quarter. No? As I already said that uh, hopefully it has become a big piece for us. And, you know, it's just kind of coming up in the new year. So, maybe uh, when we talk about the first quarter numbers, we'll be, we have a much, big, much better grip on, you know, where the numbers are looking like to go. Okay, and sir, sir, the second second follow-up question, sir, some of the brands are reaching very good scale. So now, do we plan to increase our coverage, our distribution? Uh, like, how do we plan to take these brands to really, you know, at a mega scale? Uh, if you have some thoughts on that. So you see, last year there has been a significant improvement uh, in the standalone HR also, uh, which means that uh, you know we have added people uh, by the end of the year. So as per, as, as per the brand and as per the reach, we keep on adding people whenever, wherever required. So, you know, uh, in the diabetes where the brands are getting bigger, we added some people by the end of the last year. So that's a continuous process which we keep on, uh, which we keep on undertaking, depending upon what is the reach which is reported in prescription markets and, uh, and other uh, surveys. So we are behind the big brands. Uh, Almost at, at most of the po given point, the bigger brand, uh, bigger brands have grown more than the market. So we continue to have a very sharp view uh, on expansion, whether it is people expansion, coverage expansion, or the pro portfolio expansion. Okay. Okay. And sir, last question on the manufacturing side. So you mentioned that uh, you know you are trying to transfer some of the uh, or a lot of the Dharma products into the Ahmedabad facility. So, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking that the acquisitions have been done in the last year and whereas uh, our facility was planned uh, since quite some time. So, is there any additional capex which you will be undertaking to uh, uh, make this facility viable to manufacture Derma products? There will be some incremental capex. We will get, you know, right now it's, it's a little bit 
you know, we are just talking to on the possibility side. We really don't have the plan as of now, but there is an intent to make it possible. And what happens because you have the basic infrastructure done, it's only the bolt-on plant and machinery which is required. So the chances are that we should be able to turn around. Once we get there, we will let you know what is the kind of capex which we are looking for to get inside, to get these things inside. And sir, the major cost benefit analysis for this particular derma manufacturing is the tax which will, we will be saving on it, right? Otherwise, it doesn't make sense, right? There is a gross margin benefit also which we get whenever we bring products from third party to internal manufacturing. There is a, they usually pay for itself on a gross margin improvement basis. The Correct. tax thing is a top up kind of a benefit. If it comes for, for, for gross margins, we will be paying up for capex and working capital, right? Yes, but they usually, you know, help you and you typically don't recover this in one year, right? That's not the intent. But over an acceptable period of time, three to five years, the project usually pays for itself. That's how we think about it. Okay, sir. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, say please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Gagan Tareja from ASK. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, you are. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, first question is uh, uh, simply around your accounts. One, uh, what should we pencil in uh, for your effective uh, PNL tax rate uh, in FY24? Uh, and second, uh, uh, what sort of uh, uh, debt repayment are you budgeting for FY24? Okay. The effective tax rate the target for this year it will be in the range of 14 to 15 percent, and we intend to pay off around uh, 400 crores of debt this year, 4 to 500 crores. 4 to 500 crores of debt. And uh, uh, on the on the OPNET piece, uh, uh, you know, while while uh, it's it's worked out splendidly for you in FY23, uh, is it possible, uh, you know, for you to give us some broad based idea of you know, how should we think of uh, uh, the OakNet piece uh, in terms of its scale and in terms of its margin profile for the next couple of years? And and I mean, uh, what are your plans uh, in terms of populating, uh, you know, adjacencies if possible in, in the OakNet piece? And also, you know, you've acquired brands from Glenmark and Lady. Uh, uh, how should we? sort of think about the scale of these two and in terms of margins, you know, what's the profile currently and uh, how do they stack up in the next two, three years? Look, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, but you know, I will have to repeat that, you know, we'll, we'll be able to give you broad colors once the quarter is over. But I mean, if you insist, I will uh, touch upon a couple of things. Number one and very important, you see, you know, but the whole, the gross margins of the Oakland business, the entire Dharma business, will be closer to 80%. It will be in the range of 78 to 80%, which gives us a headroom to you know for margin expansion. If, even if you see, we have 12 crore rupees of uh, sales from these two crores coming in the last quarter, and the margins are where you are. So the margins are intact. Uh, there has been a good recovery. Recovery. When I say recovery, I mean the sales which was uh, they're outside when we bought and how much of that we are able to get inside. So there has been a very good uh, recovery in the Glen in the Glenmark banks. Uh, Dr. Reddy, because it came in March, we still need one more one to get in. So fairly positive on uh, dermatology. Also remember that if we wouldn't have got uh, these two uh, bolt-on acquisition, we were ready with the large number of new, uh, new introductions which now we are postponing it for the second half. So there is quite a lot which is happening in the dermatology business. And, you know, as a company, we are very keen because, you know, it's a very large therapy. We are number three in our covered market. Overall, we are number 10 or 11, uh, you know, between that. 
and we have a lot of spaces which are completely empty. So there is a lot of excitement in the organization, but to give you more colors, give me one quarter. Right. So I'm, I'm just sort of trying to understand that at the optimal level, would OakNet margins be uh, comparable or similar to what you have on your standalone piece? Or, you know, is, is that going to be a different sort of a sustainable number? Uh, and, and if you could, you know, sort of enumerate uh, what that that possibly could be once you've stabilized and optimized it. And secondly, you know, uh, obviously there will be operating leverage and you, you are talking of improvement in overall margins as well. Uh, is it possible to give us, you know, some sort of a broad band to work with? I mean, conservatively, uh, if, if there is a number that, that, you know, or a range that, that you think is, is uh, safely given by you at this point in time? It's not, it's not a question of uh, you know. Okay, so if you want, if you want to really scratch that, so you know, uh, Eris is 82 percent loss margin roughly, uh, and is five lakh YPM, and is 38 percent of EBITDA. This is the matrix for the standalone Eris. Now, OpenEd is around 80 percent of loss margin, between 78 to 80 percent of margin. Again, five lakh of YPM. So when these two metrics are there, there is a strong chance that you know the bottom line could be close to the standalone uh, margin. I'm just giving you these three metrics. So it's just a matter of time when everything comes together. Man, give us a quarter. We'll get back to you. We are excited about this. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get back to you. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Kanal Ganesha from Acquiry. Please go ahead. Yeah, just one bookkeeping question on uh, the uh, write-off that we have taken for ZD and Zio in this year. What would be the cumulative amount for FI23? Zio, there is no, uh, you know, uh, stock which we have taken by. So Zio is not a Zio is something which, is, which fell short. So there was no supplies for us. So we yeah. couldn't supply. But was was there any inventory on our book? No, we finished off the inventory. No, we don't. We ran out of stock. There were no stocks, so okay. that's where the sale got disrupted. Okay. If you look at the ASCD, you know, Charlie, at the peak it showed 50 crore rupees last to last. Mm -hmm. and then fell to 20 crore rupees. 17. 17. So if you look at the data uh, within this data, you will find that ASCD reports from 50 of peak. Last year, last year, it went to 17 crores this year. So clearly, we ran short of uh, the inventory, and we couldn't service the demand. So that's where that loss comes in. Uh, as far as ZagD is concerned, ZagD is to the tune of 20 crores, 20, 22 crores. What? Combination of you know everything put together. Okay, sure. ZagD no, not inventory. Look what happens, ZagD, some of this ZagD we destroy even without putting to the, uh, in the market. So that piece uh, would only be taken at the cost, at the cost level. So you consider 7 to 8 crore rupees from that point of view, whole sale point of view. Okay. okay. Sure. And then secondly, while you are not guiding for any beta margin as of now, uh, would you say the, uh, the, the improvement uh, in FY24 would be um, you know, you'd start seeing that from quarter one itself, or it could be more kind of, you know, uh, towards the end or for the second half of FI24. So, look, the big moments will come, uh, moments will come from, uh, uh, you know, uh, OakNet. And we believe that, you know, well around 75% of the moment will be caught in quarter one itself. So, if we reach 75% of what we are thinking, we are, we are up and running. Sure. Perfect, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karshal Patil from Mirai Asset. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, Charles. Thank you for the opportunity. 
sir, one of the questions has already been answered on the margins. Yes, we'll wait for uh, uh, input from you next quarter. Uh, so just one clarification wanted to from you. Uh, you definitely said that there's some postponement of new launches that was uh, new product launches that was planned in FI23 on to FI24. So uh, can you just, you know, uh, let us know uh, what could be the number of launches that are then lined up for 24? So I was talking about the dermatology piece. I was not talking about the entire piece. So we, what we are saying is when the exhibitions are not planned, we were already developing formulations and talking to even some of the international guys to introduce new products in this calendar year, in the current uh, financial year, which we are now postponing to the, uh, to the second half of the year. The first focus is to you know, put uh, whatever we have acquired together and consolidate uh, on that. The total number of products which we had discussed and had reached some kind of a you know, uh, conclusion were almost 2024. Right. Right. right, but don't confuse it with diabetes kind of launches. Diabetes kind of launches are very bulky. They are you know far and few, but they are very bulky. In dermatology, it is far more fragmented, and the brand sizes are not as big as diabetes. So 24 might look like a very big number. But here, you don't plan to make brands 50, 100 crore all the time. Got that, got that, got that. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Mr. Akash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, a quick one. Uh, on the side, how much we have as on March 23, and what is the addition we are looking for? We missed you, Prakash. Please say it again. No, on the MR, the uh, uh, Oh, sorry, to grab. Uh, sir, there's a lot of uh, echo from your line, Mr. Agarwal. Is it better? Is it better? No, so this is Hello. Hello. Can I go ahead? Can I go ahead? I can hear you guys. Hello. Yeah, Prakash, stage. Yeah, no, just wanted to do the MR number for fiscal 23 and likely addition for fiscal 24. What you can see as of now, Prakash, is we might need a, a, one more division in dermatology, but that will happen in the second half. A division in dermatology means roughly around 100 people take some and you know, leave some. So that is the visibility as of now. And what is the current status as of now? Some 700 in open, close to. That's including three dermatology and one gynecology. Yeah. So, yeah. so 700 in uh, open as of now might go to 800 by the end of this year. And in total? So standalone is 2200. And open it to 700, so that is largely the total number. Okay, okay, and the max you will add about 100 more. Yeah, looks like, looks like the cost. Okay, and just one clarification, so you said you would diverge open it and amalgamate, so it will sit in uh, standalone. Your okay, line is breaking, yeah. Can you come again? Okay, no, I'll take it off. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Puneet Pujara from Helios Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, sir, just one clarification on slide four and slide six. Numbers for open it revenue and EBITDA are slightly different. Could you clarify, please? Yeah, so slide four shows the numbers that are on our books because they end in mid-May. Mm -hmm. So, Oaknet full year revenues are 250, but because Oaknet was with us for 10 and a half months of the year, so what is in our books is 226. Okay, so slide six is pro forma numbers. Yeah, full year. What Oaknet actually did for the full year. Sure, sir. That, that's helpful. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.
Reminded to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. As there are no further questions, I now have the conference over to Mr. V. Krishna Kumar for the closing comments. Thank you. Financial year 23 has been a year of massive investment for us, starting with the OpNet deal in May 22, right through to the DRL brand deal in March 23. However, we are happy to note that things have started coming together well as early as starting this April. We are in the midst of operationally integrating Eris and OpNet and we are confident that the combined entity will deliver industry-leading growth along with significant margin expansion. We will continue to focus on good quality growth, which for us means growth achieved without the dilution of gross margin and cash conversion ratio. We will continue to be guided by this thesis as we execute on our multiple growth levers such as power brand expansion, new product pipeline, and acquisitions. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Eris Life Sciences Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.